Oh, what do we have here, gear fans? What is it today, the mystery purchase? I think this will be worth your time. No, let me preface that. Let me let me change that back to uh, my new, my new uh, strap line for the beginning of every show. This video is not worth your time, and you shouldn't watch it. You have better things to do. But if you do stick around, this video is, what is the green lump? So... Without further ado, I don't usually do this. I don't usually uh, invest in artifacts such as these, but it's a Russian Sovtech muff. Now, I uh, should have done my research a little bit better before I started the video. I fully intended to, but to be honest, I fell asleep and had a nap and forgot the plot. I basically just woke up, come downstairs, and started shooting videos and doing my research. But if I got this right, in the early 90s, uh, Mike Matthews almost went broke with electroharmonics, especially with the, the tube stock disappearing. So he went over to Russia, and Sovtech is, you know, Soviet technology. I'm guessing that says made in Russia. And he, he had a whole really cool run of stuff uh, built in Russia. So, yeah, I, I took, a, took a swing at this, and um, the guy off... Uh, um, reverb wouldn't you know it he, he forgot the door so i said well you go ahead and give me my money back because i got a real short patience this year uh, i've been ripped off too many times in a row <clears throat> you go ahead and give me my money back so i can give you your one star on reverb and we can get this done he, oh no, no i got the door so he hasn't sent the door so i'm going to give him a few more days to get me the door uh but my patience is wearing thin because i'm tired of getting ripped off this this year the door's in the picture like who does that so you sell it on Reverb, you take the door off and then mail it? Like, come on, man. There's just no excuse. But anyway, the Russian Big Muff by Sovtech, Soviet technology. So let's try to get a good... Well, let's go see which guitar we're going to we're gonna play with here. I figured... I figured this guy was a good... A good Big Muff match. This is the... Squire Jagmaster. I tuned it up last night, so hopefully it's in relatively good tune. So, <clears throat> dang, I am stuffed up today. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know why. All right, we're just going to go through the, the Ruby. I'm going to try to get the Ruby to kind of do a neutral clean. Um, the jacks are kind of reversed. I remember that from when I was a kid. I had one of these when I was like 16, 17, and I'm pretty sure at least at least one other guy in my band did too, maybe a couple in and out. All right, so the guitar is going to go in, and then it's going to go out. I guess we better, oh, our Ruby's already powered up, so that's good news. Excuse me. <coughs> wow. All right. I was watching the Wim Hof some Wim Hof stuff on YouTube when I went to sleep. And I think I started Wim Hof breathing in my in my little nap dreams, and I don't know how to do it. So I, I literally caught myself being a being a breathing weirdo in my nap. And I woke up funny. But the irony is there if I if I just took the time instead of having a nap on the couch, if I just learn the Wim Hof breathing. I wouldn't have this nasal problem at all right now. Anyway, plug this guitar in. So we got the uh, Jagmaster plugged in here. All right, so what are we dealing with here? We're coming into channel nine on the task cam. Let's we'll do the lightest little kiss of compression. We'll keep the EQ flat. We'll do no auxiliary. And we will. Make sure we got some volume here. Now, me and the Ruby are kind of unfamiliar with each other right now. There we go. Is this a is this a good enough box? A 
that's not too bad. All right, the moment of truth. It's with the shadow. I'm standing in my own light. All right. So I did have to take the knobs off and recalibrate them. I already did that. Let's just do them all straight up at 12. So I've already taken this thing completely apart. What a weird shadow that is on there. I'm just going to get a light really quick. I have one handy. Mind that. Like I said, if you're annoyed, just, just watch something else. But if you're not, stick around and we'll play with the big muff here. So I'm just going to get my little YouTube light going. There we go. How's that? All right. So I'm going to, here's a G chord. And here it is with the Big Muff Pie. Sure why it's so woolly today. Let's get a little more distortion going, a little more tone. So obviously, <laughs> messed up the rip. So that's who I know had one in the 90s was the Smashing Pumpkins. I'm going to crank the volume. If you do too much distortion, it gets really woolly. And you then you usually need the tone to get the treble to come out of it. the other day had his exactly like this let's see what that's like oftentimes too straight up at 12 but I just it needs the volume in my opinion oh look at that we're feeding back there's a fake amp and we're feeding back
out of control, just really woolly. They get really out of control real quick on this thing. Um, but I don't know what other settings to even try. Let's try with the tone way down. Oh, that's weird. We're feeding back again. Oh, I know what it was. The person the other day had it like this, this, and this, and they were playing a bass through it. So I'll have to try that out. The other thing I've got, I've got the mini, like the New York style mini. So I'm going to hook it up. Plus I can get, I can get the reissue, the little green, the little green Russian. Uh, so I'll probably pick that up on the weekend. Um, just so that, you know, this one can sit around as more of an antique piece. I mean, it's what, 30 years old now, 20 years old, at least, uh, 25 years old, something like that. So that this one can just sit in a cabinet and then I'll play the little green, um, the little green Russian, which you can get all day, but I'll we'll also do a video on comparing them. But yeah, I'll also put up my, um, my New York, uh, mini next to it just to see what the difference is. I have a feeling the New York mini will sound a little more modern and a little more controlled because this thing is, uh, it gets woolly. <laughs> It's woolly and it just doesn't care. Russian, the Russian <clears throat> Sobtek Electro Harmonics from, I bought mine in 97, um, I don't know when this guy bought his, apparently there was an album recorded, he, I, he's like, he said, uh, he said something about a famous album and then it just turns out it was own, his own album, which is not a famous album, he's like, well just tell me anyway, I'd like to, I'd like to at least know, but he wouldn't at that point, so it's like, well come on man. If this was used as an artifact of somebody's recording, I don't even—I don't even care if he sold one copy. I'd still like to know what CD it was, but uh, he didn't tell me. But I'll be talking to him soon if he don't freaking send that door. But yeah, get a little closer look here. I gotta hold the bottom because the stupid battery will pop out. If you ever see this on the market again, it's got this brown line on it right here, like a scratch. I said I had to take these off. They were all, they're all janky, going every which way. So I've already had this whole thing apart. Um, so does it sound great? Nah, not really. I think I might like the New York a little bit better. So what is it with this? It's novelty. It's a collector's. It's the form factor that you know. It's like a big Sovtech Russian tank. Um, let's kill that buzz. I want to get the the Smashing Pumpkins muff. I want to get the J Mascus. I want to get, as I mentioned, the other Russian reissue. I'm just going to collect a bunch of them. So, but anyway, yeah, that's my latest acquisition investment. Thanks for watching.